would have thought a couple weeks ago that Minnesota and Tennessee would be the game of the week? And who would have thought that would be the game featuring quarterbacks drafted in the mid-90s that have been to the bench? <laughs> now starting to be the saviors for their team. Say how are you folks, Jason Horowitz, CBS Sports.com's Clark Judge, and of course CBS Sports' Ian Eagle. Glad to be with you on the end zone presented by Sony. And guys, let's start with this because Tennessee's a 3-0 team here. So let's start with the Titans. When you look at them, are they the most complete team in the AFC South? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, they, they can run the ball. Um, they can pass it now because Vince Young's not back there. They're not passing greatly, but they're passing effectively and efficiently. But they can run the ball, plus they play lights-out defense. And that's why this game, to me, is interesting because they can stop the run. And if you stop the run, what's Minnesota going to do? They're going to have to throw the ball. Now we find out about Gus Farad. And, and Ian, what, what do you know about Gus Farad in this game? Can he put it all on his shoulders? Well, I think what we did find out was that Minnesota finally gave in to the idea that Tavares Jackson isn't ready to lead this team. And when you look back now, although publicly, what do they say during the offseason? He's growing, he's developing, but privately, they wanted Brett Favre. And that probably should have been the indication that they knew there was going to be a short leash there. The thing that stands out most about Farad is he's savvy. He won't panic. And maybe at this particular time, this is what Minnesota needs. They've got the dominating run game with Adrian Peterson. Basically, they were asking Tavares Jackson to make a play or two and just manage the offense the rest of the way. He proved that he couldn't do that. But Tennessee has stopped the run before. So, I mean, this looks like on paper that it's going to have to fall on Gus Farad's shoulders. But, again, they, they stopped teams, but they haven't stopped Adrian Peterson yet this year. No, that's right. And, and this, is, this is the first real test, I think, for this Tennessee defense. I mean, they had Jacksonville in the, in the opener, and they stopped them effectively. Uh, last week, Steve Slayton had a big first half, big but they stopped half. him in the second half. Now, people say, what, you know, who exactly has, has Tennessee beaten here? I mean, they're, the record of their, their opponents is a combined one and seven, but Minnesota has a chance to make something happen. They can't wait much longer, and Ian's right. I mean, you know, Adrian Peterson is a special player. If you put it on Gus Farad's shoulders, now you find out about what Gus Farad can do, because the one thing about Tennessee, they can force the turnover. They've got eight this year at least late. But, but the other side to this is, Minis or is Tennessee's strength offensively. You said they could pass effectively, but their strength is running the football. Sure. We all know that. Minnesota's strength defensively is stopping the run. you got strength against strength. Which one budgets? Well, Tennessee right now has that fire and ice working that we've seen in the NFL where you've got the power running style with White and then you've got the finesse with Johnson, who mm -hmm. could be the fastest player in the league right now. Mm -hmm. They pride themselves on being a physical football team on both sides of the ball. They might be the most physical team uh, if you look at everyone in the NFL in football right now. Minnesota... The foundation is defense up the middle. They're so strong with Williams. And then they want to make you one-dimensional. They want you to pass on them right. because they've got a great secondary. They've got playmakers with the likes of Winfield and Sharper. Interesting matchup there. I still like Tennessee offensively to get some things done. Do we have the best defensive tackles in the NFL in this game? Yeah, I say we do. Uh, I mean, on one side, you that's Minnesota. I mean, you put either one of those guys, either one of the Williams guys together. The interesting thing about this game to me is these teams are mirror images of each other. They really are. I mean, you look everywhere. One team can run. The other team can run. One team has a veteran quarterback. The other team has a veteran quarterback. Another team has a marquee pass rusher, and we're talking about uh, Bannon Bosch or Jared Allen, yeah. you know, and they can stop the run. It, but you're also right about uh, Hainsworth. Hainsworth uh, is, when is, motivated, he might be the best right. in the league. And you've got to assume in a game against Adrian Peters and the man's going to be motivated. You, you'd have to think so. Plus, I he's think, in a contract year. Oh, there, there's the motivation. <laughs> yeah, the Peters thing's not bad. The contract year, that's, that's the difference. Let's pick the winners here, guys. Who do you like? I like Tennessee. I like Tennessee. They're tough. They're technically sound. And I think they're gaining confidence each mm -hmm. week. Right now, they're starting to believe that they are the best team in their division. All right. So you like Tennessee to get to 4-0. You will be covering it. So we'll right. be looking forward to that, uh, seeing that on uh, Sunday, of course, on CBSSports.com. For Clark Judge and Ian Eagle, be sure to check out everything else in the end zone presented by Sony. We're going to talk about the Colts. Speaking of that division, how far are they about to fall even after their bye week? And we're also going to talk about the Raiders, speaking of falling. All that on CBSSports.com. Take care, folks.